Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Today's tutorial covers the process of making a miniature self-defense lanyard. Here is the project that we're going to make. Since it is fairly small, this is not really a self-defense weapon. It is mostly a decorative piece or maybe a toy. So, we have here a 1 inch ball bearing covered with a pineapple knot. Then we have an 8 stranded braid which transforms into a loop and the joint section here is hidden under a decorative knot. Let's take a look at the supplies. The first thing that you're going to need for your project is type 1 paracord. You're going to need 4 strands, each 8 feet long. You're going to need a 1 inch bearing. You're going to need a mandrel with a 1 inch diameter. We're going to tie our knot onto the mandrel, then transfer it onto our bearing. You can use a broomstick handle, a pill bottle, you can use a PVC pipe, whatever you have. I recommend placing a rubber band onto your mandrel to hold your cords while you're working. A lacing needle is used to help us guide our cords when tying knots and splicing. Scissors and a lighter are the final two supplies used to cut and melt our ends. Let's begin tying. We're going to start our project with the pineapple knot which covers the bearing. In our case, this is going to be a 4 pass type 4 pineapple knot. So here you can see the initial setup. We place our first cord under the rubber band which is placed onto the mandrel. I start tying my knot 3 feet into my cord. So the standing end is not needed and it is 3 feet long. The rest of the cord here is our working end used to tie the knot. The very tip of the working end sports the lacing needle. To tie the base knot, take your working hand and pass around your mandrel. Come over the standing hand and around again. Pass over this strand, like this. Take your lacing needle and go under over. So the opposite to this strand. Under. Over. Like this. Pass around coming to the standing end. Now double up the standing end traveling alongside it under over like this here on the right side we're going to travel the opposite to this strand so over under over Like this. Come around again. Coming to the standing end. Here at the standing end. We have two strands. So the standing end and the cord doubling it up. 
We're going to travel in between these two strands and do the opposite. So we start it over, under, over. Like this. And here on the right side, we again travel the opposite to this strand. So under, over, under, over. Like this. This brings us to the standing hand. Double it up. So under, over, under, over. On the right side, travel the opposite to this strand. Over, under, over, under, and over. This brings us here to the standing end, which is again double top. Travel in between these two strands and do the opposite. So we start it over, under, over, under and over. And from right to left, we travel the opposite to this strand. So under, over, under, over, under, and over. Like this. Place your working hand alongside the standing hand and this completes our knot. I'm now going to place the working hand here under the rubber band to keep it out of the way. Like this. I recommend taking a bit of cord and running it into the knot to loosen it up a bit. This is going to make the next step a bit easier. Our knot is ready for the second step, the interweave. The second pass is started by placing your second cord onto the left side of the first standing hand. Again, I have tucked three feet of cord under the rubber band. So the standing hand is three feet long. With the working hand, we start it by traveling under two. So under two on the left of the first standing hand. Then follow the strand on the left, traveling over one, under one, over, under, and over. Like this. Pass on top of this byte. 
and re-enter, going over, under, over under, over to the split this pair, and under one. So this is what you get. You follow this by it on top, then you re-enter, coming here to the left. Here, we are going to turn around, going under one, like this, and again follow the strand to the left. Over one, under one, over one, under one, and over two. Travel on top of the next byte, like this, re-entering over one, then under one, over, under two, the split up here, over two to split a pair, and under one. Here, again, we start it under one, like this, and we follow the strand on the left. Over one, under one, over one, under two, over two. Again, follow the next byte on top of it, so this one, and to re enter over one, then under one. Over two to split a pair, under two to split a pair, over two to split a pair, and under one. Here we again start it under one. Then continue following the strand on the left. Over one, under one, over two to split a pair, under two to split a pair, and over two. Again, travel on top of the next byte and enter over one, then under two to split a pair, over two, under two, over two, and under one. Again, start your sequence under one, like this, follow the strand on the left, over one, under two to split a pair, 
over to, under to, and over to. Again, travel on top of the next byte, entering over to, under to, over to, under to, over to, and under one. On the left, we again start under 1, then continue over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, and over 2. And now for our final sequence. We travel on top of the final byte and we enter under 1 so this is very important enter under 1 then split the pairs by traveling over 2 under 2 over 2 under 2 over 2 and under 1. Now place your working hand right next to the standing hand, like this going under 2. Then place it under the rubber band, like this. I highly recommend working some slack into the knot. The cord for the third pass is placed in between the first and second standing end. So in between the first and second cord. I have tucked three feet of cord under the rubber band. The rest is going to be used to tie the knot. I'm going to begin traveling under 4. This brings me just on top of this V-shape or crossing from the second pass. Then I follow the strand on the left, over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, and over 2 on the right. Travel on top of this byte and re-enter over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, then over 3 to split this pair, and under 2. Then, here on the left, we start our next sequence under 2. And we follow the strand on the left. Over 2, under 2, over 2, under 2, and over 3 on the right.
pass on top of the next byte and re-enter over 2 then under 2 over 2 under 3 to split a pair over 3 to split a pair and under 2 On the left, we start our sequence with an under 2. Then continue by following this strand over 2, under 2, over 2, under 3, and over 3. Travel on top of the next byte, entering over 2. Then continue under 2, over 3 to split a pair, under 3 to split another pair, over 3 and under 2. Start the next sequence under 2, and follow the strand on the left, over 2, under 2, over 3 to split a pair, then under 3, and over 3 on the right. Travel on top of the next byte and re-enter over 2. Then under 3 to split a pair Over 3 to split a pair, under 3 to split a pair, over 3 and under 2. On the left, we again start under 2, then follow the strand on the left, traveling over 2, then under 3 to split a pair, over 3 to split a pair, under 3 and over 3. Travel on top of the next byte and start your sequence traveling over 3. Then under 3 over 3, under 3, over 3, and 
under 2 On the left, we start our sequence traveling under 2. Then continue following this strand on the left, traveling over 3 to split a pair, under 3 to split a pair, Over 3 to split a pair, under 3, and over 3. We are now at our final sequence. Travel on top of this byte, entering under 1 to split a pair. Again, this is very important. Then, we're going to travel towards the left, splitting pairs over 3, under 3. Over 3, under 3. over 3 and under 2. Place your working hand alongside the standing hand of your third chord. So passing under 3, like this, then placing your cord under the rubber band. Work some slack into the knot and then we're going to continue. The last cord is placed in between the first and third standing hand. So between the first and third chord, I have tucked three feet into the standing hand under the rubber band. The rest is my working hand. So I'm going to travel in between the first and third chord, traveling under six. So this brings me just above a V-shape or crossing of the third chord. Through the knot I'm going to travel in between the first and third chord. I'm going to follow the left strand going over 3 under 3, over 3, under 3, and over 3 on the right. I'm going to follow this byte on top of it and re-enter over 3. Then under 3, over 3, under 3, over 4 to split a pair, and under 3.
From left to right, I'm going to start it by going under three. Follow the strand on the left, over three, under three, over three, under three, and over four. Follow the next byte on top of it and re-enter over 3. Then under 3. Over 3. Under 4 to split a pair. Over 4 to split a pair. And under 3. On the left, we start under 3. Then follow the strand on the left, over 3, under 3, over 3, under 4, and over 4. Travel on top of the next byte. Re-enter over 3. Then under 3. Over 4 to split a pair. Under 4 to split a pair. Over 4 to split a pair. And under 3. On the left. We again start under 3. Follow the strand on the left, over 3, under 3, over 4, to split a pair, under 4, and over 4. Travel on top of this byte. Re-enter over 3. Then under 4 to split a pair. Over 4 to split a pair. Under 4 to split a pair, over 4 to split a pair, and under 3. On the left, we again start under 3. Then follow the strand on the left, over 3, under 4 to split a pair, over 4 to split a pair, under 4 and over 4. Travel 
on top of the next byte, starting your sequence over 4 to split a pair, under 4 again to split a pair, over 4, under 4, over 4, and under 3. On the left, we start with an under 3, then continue following the left strand over 4, under 4, over 4, under 4, and over 4. Travel on top of the next byte and begin your sequence with an under 1. Like this. Then we're going to travel over 4, under 4, Over 4, under 4, over 4, and under 3. Finally, tuck your working hand under 4, right next to the standing hand of the 4th chord. Place your working hand under the rubber band and our pineapple knot is complete. We're going to continue by bringing all eight of our ends through the center of the knot. So, somewhere around here. We're going to start with this bottom chord, so this pair, then the next, the next, and the next. Basically, we're going to play around a bit and get all of the ends to come out at the same spot. So the first working end is going to follow the standing hand to the middle point of the knot. So alongside here, under 4, then over 3, under 1, and it comes out right alongside the standing hand out of the seam opening. I'm now going to remove the standing hand since it is doubled up. Like this. Then we're going to do the next pair. So the second working hand Again, follows the standing hand, so over 4, under 1, like this. Then we bring the standing hand out, like this. 
like this to do the same opening. And the next pair, take the working end and work it to the same opening. So over these strands, then under like this and bring the standing end out. And finally, the last pair Again, I follow the standing end coming out at the same spot. Then I pull the standing end out. So something like this. I now have eight ends to work with. Once the knot is prepared, we have the simple task of tightening up the knot. You place the bearing inside the knot and you begin tightening up. Usually I take two strands, so the standing end and the working end, and I compare the two. So in this case, this is the longer strand. I'm going to work from the longer strand towards the shorter one to try to even them out. So I simply go through the knot and start tightening up. We're going to do several passes of tightening so you don't have to be terribly thorough and tighten up too hard on your first pass. All we're doing now is removing the initial slack into the short end. So once you do one pair, you take the next pair of strands. So let's say this one. And you again compare the lengths of the two ends. So this end is longer. So I'm going to work from the long end towards the shorter one. I really want all the eight ends at the end of the tightening process to be of equal length. After we tighten up the knot, we're going to move on to this braided part in between the loop and our knot. So here is how I set up my braid. I take a loop made out of a scrap piece of cord. I place it over my door handle. And I place my knot into the loop. This way I get some tension onto my cords. The braiding is quite simple to do. We separate our cords, four to the left, four to the right. 
we have a color sequence on both sides of one color, the other color, the first color and again the second color. We are going to be braiding two strands at a time. So we essentially have four pairs of strands. Take the top right pair, pass behind, in between the two pairs on the left, and back to the bottom on the right. Take the top left pair, travel behind, in between the two pairs on the right, and back to the bottom on the left. And again, top right, comes behind, in between the two pairs on the left, and back to the bottom on the right. And the top left pair comes behind, in between the two pairs on the right, and back to the bottom on the left. Once in a while, tighten up by pulling on all of the strands. Then continue the same way. So, top right, behind, in between, and back to the bottom on the right. Top left, behind, in between, and back to the bottom on the left. Then the top right, behind, in between, and back to the bottom on the right. Top left, behind, in between, back to the bottom on the left. So at this point, I think you know how to do it. This is the zigzag pattern that you get when braiding like this. So all we're doing is essentially braiding an 8-stranded braid in pairs of 2. After you braid a length that you find sufficient, we're going to form a loop. First, fold your braid into an eye. Then work your four pairs back into the braid with each pair following a pair in the braid. So I'm going to start here with these two pairs and I'm going to leave these two for now. So the first pair is going to follow this pair of strands. So this one here under like this. Then the other pair 
is going to follow a pair of strands just above. So, under here. Then the other two ends, so the first one is going to follow this pair here, under these two strands. Like this, and the final pair is going to follow the pair just above. So, under here. Pull on all of the ends to lock everything into place. As you can see, we have a nice looking loop. I'm going to bring these two pairs, which are furthest back, up to this point where we have the other two pairs. So I'm going to tuck this one and this one once more. So like this and under here. And this pair above here and under here. So the result now is that I have all of the pairs of strands at about the same spot in the braid. This makes the covering knot a lot easier to tie. Again, very firmly tighten up all of your ends, just to lock everything into place. Now, probably the most challenging or unusual part of the tutorial, the covering knot. Finally, the covering knot. Grab all eight of your cords. Line them up one next to the other. This is going to result in an alternating color sequence. Wrap around. Like this. Take your first cord. We're going to weave through the eight wrapping cords using our eight ends. The first cord starts under over, under over, under over, under and over. 
so a total of four unders and four overs. The second chord is going to repeat the same sequence of under over, but starting under the previous working hand. So under over, under over, under over, under and over. So under the previous working hand, then parallel to it for a total of four unders and four overs. The next chord, so the third one, starts its sequence under the second working hand. Again, under, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. So, four unders, four overs. And the next chord, again, under the previous working hand, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And the next end, again, under the previous working hand, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And the next working hand under the previous one, then over, under, over, under, over. under and over. And the next working hand, under the previous one, then over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. The last chord, again, travels under the previous working hand, then repeats the same sequence. So, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. As you can see, we are traveling in between two parallel chords and splitting them. Under, over. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. 
And this is probably the hardest part of this knot. Setting up a proper sequence with each chord traveling under four times and over four times. Each chord travels under the previous working hand, then parallel to it. After the initial setup, the next few steps are easy. You take a strand, remember that we finished each sequence from right to left using an over one. Then, pass under the next working hand and travel parallel to the strand on the left. Like this. You take another strand. Remember that we finished our sequence going over. Pass under the next working hand. And parallel to the strand on the left. And the next end, it doesn't really matter where you started. So we finished our sequence going over, then under our next working hand, and parallel to the strand on the left. And the next end. Again, we finish over. Then under the next working end. And parallel to the strand on the left. And the next end finishes over, then we pass under the next working end and parallel to the strand on the left. And the next end finishes its sequence going over, then under the next working end, and parallel to the strand on the left. And the next end again finishes over. Then we pass under the next working end and parallel to the strand on the left. And the very last of our ends passes over here, then travels alongside the strand on the left,
like this. So this is the second step. Each of our working ends passes over two on the left, then doubles up the next working end, traveling under over, under over, under over, under and over on the right. We are going to continue by weaving our ends back to the left in an under two over two sequence. So you take one of the ends and you start it. Under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, over two, under two, and over two on the left. Then repeat with the remaining seven ends. So you start under two and continue weaving from right to left. Again, we start under two and keep weaving in an under two over two sequence. So like this. You can kinda recognize the pattern now, but after tightening it's going to look much better. We are now going to secure our ends by feeding them under the knot. So each of our strands finishes over two. Then, what I like to do 
is pass over one of the strands coming out of the braid and under the knot to the right, like this. And the next strand exactly the same way. So it finishes over two. Then I pass over a strand coming out of the braid and under the knot. And the next strand Again, it finishes over two. Then I pass over one of the strands coming out of the braid and under the knot to the right. Continue this with all of your ends. And with that, we have tied our knot. So if you got to this point, congratulations. Tightening the knot is going to shrink it by about half, from this to this. We start on the left with a strand coming out of the braid. We work it through the knot We do this slowly and gradually Then we pull the slack into one of the working hands. Then we simply continue with the next strand. So one coming out of the braid. And we pull the slack into one of the ends. So keep doing this, going through all of the ends, then repeat for a second, maybe a third time. After tightening, cut and melt the ends as close to the knot as possible.
Roll the knot under the plank to even it out. Roll the pineapple knot as well and you are done. And that's our project. I hope that I made things clear enough and that you were able to get to this point. Thank you very much for joining me today, consider supporting the site on Patreon and I'll see you in my future tutorials.